that was really unique about this episode that I hope you noticed. The first 15 minutes were all one shot. It's a 15 minute one -er is what we call it. it. Is very, very rare. If it, I, I mean, I don't even know how many times it's happened. It's been extraordinarily rare. We just said, look, we're a different show. Let's go for it. It's going to be difficult. All the actors have to memorize all their lines perfectly. There's no mess ups allowed because then you'd have to start over. Um, we just thought it would be a really interesting way to show real time and to show um, the, the, the activity and I think there's something special about one shot and not cutting and not slowing it down that just really makes it feel alive. So here we go, episode three. Let's get right into it. But where would be a good place to start? For you? Yes, for me. The law of Moses, the prophecies of Isaiah, the wisdom of Solomon. Mm. For you, I think, Psalms of David. Good start. I'm ready. For example, to the choir master, a Psalm of David. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. And? Just that. Just a few more minutes. Thank you for your patience, guys. Thank you. But I'm not planning on ascending to heaven or making my bed deep in the depths. You asked for a passage. Yes, but one that could help me understand how you and everyone else knows more. <laughs> That's what I know and what you must come to believe if you want to make any meaningful study of Torah. I don't understand. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, can you tell me what happened to Jesus? He healed me. Healed you of what? Epilepsy. Yes, and how long have... Say it back to me. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed deep in the depths, you are there. There's nowhere you can go. No height you can climb to in your intellectual mind. No depths you can reach in your soul where God is not with you. Do you get it? I think so. No amount of learning can bring you closer to God or make you more or less precious to him. He's always right here, right now, with you, for you. But I don't feel it. The feeling doesn't always come first. Sometimes you have to believe first. Believing a thing does not make it true. Uh, that is wisdom, but these are not just any words. They are David's in scripture. But how do you know whether David was only talking about himself and not everyone else? He did say, if I ascend, not if people ascend. It almost sounds like you don't want it to be true. Excuse me, can you please tell me what happened with Jesus? Are you with him? Yes, yes, we are his students. <laughs> are you okay? I'm fine. So with the passage of David, I'm just trying to understand. The trying is the thing. Meditate on it for a few days and come back to me. You're always writing things down. Try writing it down several times. Something about writing it down that goes a long way. That's what I say too. Matthew, I think we've only just begun to know all you can do. Thaddeus, little James, you're up. How's the line? It's getting longer. I'll come back out soon and help you. I won't take my full break. Where is Nathaniel? Is it my turn to replace him. Said he's staying through, doesn't want to stop his shift. Philip. Take my place, see if you could make some headway. He's scary good. There have been over 60 people already with 50 waiting in line currently, not including lepers and others who are still in line. Did you say over 50 in the line right now? Yes. How long is this going to last? Well, it depends on each encounter you have. Oh, never mind, I get it. Matthew. Yes? Did you get some ideas from Torah? Yes, from the songs of David. The passage to study before we learn more. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed deep in the depths, you are there. Believe me. What? Is that from the firewood from before? Yes. And then when I pushed back the man that was rushing the line, I cut it more on his back. Hand me that rag. That same man you speak of bumped into me on his way out after Jesus healed his wife. I believe he's one of the men who arrived here last night. 
almost a four hour walk this morning and we didn't even have a moment to settle in. I mean, it's great what he's doing, obviously, but I wish it would have happened tomorrow. What is happening? <laughs> what are we a part of? Is it wrong to say I have no idea? No, it makes me feel better. I think that I haven't had time to think about it. All this time, my parents, I just now hate it. Other than that, I figured Thomas and I would get our answers from the rest of you. The word is already spreading so fast. I didn't think about that. Have you thought about the fame from all of this? I wouldn't mind being famous. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's not as fun as you might think. I cannot remember a time I did not think about the Messiah at least once a week. My whole life I prayed and prayed that he would come during this time, and I just hoped that I would at least get to see him. But to be close to him like this, and nobody like me, I... <sighs> What's not fun about that? <laughs> you called today fun. Maybe not fun, but good. With this fame comes enemies. You'll be hated too. I'm used to that. Well, you were protected, and your enemies weren't powerful. Speaking of enemies, if someone had told you growing up that you would be a student of the Messiah, you, you would be close to him and you will help him in his mission, what would you have thought? I would have said, sorry, I'm a girl. Ask my brother. <laughs> Fair enough. But really, Thomas, hmm? what would you have thought? I would have thought, I don't have military training. That's uh, still a problem, actually. Exactly. When I was a child, I used to think how amazing it would be to see Messiah kill all the Romans on my street, and I wanted to help him. I trained every day with a wooden sword. Yes, and I have this scar that proves he was pretty good. <laughs> I used to imagine that the Romans would break into our home, and I would be hiding under the bed with a knife. And just when they came to get me, Messiah would rescue me at the last moment. I didn't think we'd be spending our time healing. Well, watching him heal. And they'll never stop. The people come the more they hear about it, and we're just going to be doing this the next five years, and we'll never get to the fighting part. Eager to bring out that wooden sword of yours, are you? Do you honestly not know what I'm talking about? I guess I haven't had any expectations. It's probably why it's a little easier for me. I can remember as a little girl hearing about how someone would save us someday, but I don't remember much about it. Why is it you expect a warrior? Zechariah. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east. Yes, and yes, yes. The Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, and half of it will move in all this craziness, but we don't even know when this is going to be, if it's even in this lifetime. Here's what I also do not understand. Isn't the Messiah supposed to come at a time when all is holy? I, that's at least what you've been telling me. What is that from? Even a prophetic poem from the rabbis not so long ago. And there shall be no unrighteousness in them on his day. For they shall all be holy, and their king shall be the Lord Messiah. This is why the Pharisees do not think he is the one, Mary. You have to help clean up the Red Quarter first. <laughs> I don't think he's waiting for us to be holy. And I think he's here because we can't be holy without him. Whoa, that's good. The baptizer will want to use that. Hey, James, I need you to help with crowd control. People are bickering and getting physical, and uh, bickering. I can't help much in that department. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Gonna have to use my sword on them before the Romans. <laughs> so, let's see here. How are we doing? <laughs> well, how uh, do I put this? Uh... Are you serious? I'm more soft than I was. Yes, yes you are. I thought you said you were good at this. I thought I was. I can't get out of this now. Sorry, James. Yeah. 
So what was everyone talking about? Eh, uh, not much. Just prophecy, our growing fame, the Messiah healing disease instead of overthrowing the Romans. Small topics like that. Well, I'm not sorry I missed it. <laughs> God. I'm ready for this day to be over. What about out there? Anything happen in your short shift? No, it's the same as all day. One thing that is annoying me, though, is these people. They are believing in him and, and praising him. And don't get me wrong, that's great, but it's because he's healing them. The Samaritans. Yeah, that's pretty much what he said. That's all they needed. I know. I just don't know how many of them would believe in him if he wasn't healing them. So I have to ask. <laughs> I think I can guess. I, I have two questions. Forgive me, but I speak plainly. What is your malady? Forgive me, I, I don't mean to offend. It, it's fine. It's um, a form of paralysis. It's, it's caused problems since birth. It's almost time for evening meal. Are you hungry? So then why... I mean, why hasn't he healed you? How do you watch all these healings today? Does it bother you? Fair questions. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about all of this. I, I mean, I suppose one big thing is that I haven't asked. Why not? I don't know. If I had your uh, struggle and I was watching what was happening today, I demand it. I don't know if I should. It just doesn't feel right. You know, and I suppose I've, I've just been grateful that he called me to follow him in spite of it, but it's never come up, not even once. And I'm just afraid that if I mention it to him, it will make him change his mind about me or something. Pretty sure he knows your situation. <laughs> it's not like if you pointed out, he'd be surprised. That's true. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Thank you. We thought you were coming tomorrow. Ah, well, some friends were uh, able to come with me earlier, so they dropped me off today, and they're seeing some family in the area. You'll be with us for a little while, yes? Through the feast, and then we'll see. Oh, Philip, Shalom. What are you doing here? I'm with your son now. Is John all right? Is, I haven't spoken to him in a while. John is fine, but he said the time was now, so here I am trying to make myself useful. Uh -huh. Mary, this is Matthew. He wasn't with us at the wedding. Ah, Shalom, Matthew. Welcome. Oh, look. That's fine clothing. Thank you. Well, what do you do? I don't. I, I He's was... a new student. Uh, Jesus called him. Ah, lovely. Well, I'm sure you're someone special. So, uh, was today a very long day? I <laughs> saw a lot of people. <laughs> Simon told me to come back here. Do we know when Jesus will be finished? We walked here from Philippi this morning, and he hasn't stopped since then. Mm. He has always been a worker. He gets that from his father. Both of them, I suppose. <laughs> Speaking of work, I see the food. You look exhausted. I'm here to help. We'll have it ready very, very soon. 